to Building a Fighter. My name is Dr. Austin Shane, sports chiropractor in Scottsdale, Arizona. With me, as always, badass strength coach in Denver, Colorado, Alex Friedman. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the more popular flexibility, mobility, core training methods that fighters and athletes tend to gravitate towards. What's good about them, what's bad about them. Um, and, and just straight up myths were surrounding them. So Alex, let's start with the most popular, the old yoga yogis. What do you like? What's, what are your thoughts on yeah. yoga for fighters? Dude, everybody, everybody seems to like the idea of yoga, right? It's like, like anytime you bring up yoga in a conversation, there's at least going to be one person that says, man, I should be doing yoga. I should yep. get back to that. Or I should, I really need to get more flexible. Right. And Personally, I like yoga. I like doing it. I, I like the way it makes me feel. I, I I enjoy it. I'm very bad at it, but I enjoy it. <laughs> um, so yoga is not to me something that's going to be exclusively beneficial for you as a fighter. I think there can be a lot of benefits to it, but there can also be a lot of downfalls to it. So um, some of the biggest benefits that we can get by adding yoga is we can get like an active recovery for a lot of it. Okay. Um, a lot of movement, a lot of static holds, a lot of stretching. Sure. Um, that workout, it just by nature is going to be a lot less intense than most of your MMA sessions, right? Like just again, in the nature of holding poses, no really external resistance, uh, no fast paced, high movements. So, um, we can get a lot of active recovery from that. I think there's a big mental benefit, which is kind of the the crux of all of these additional mobility, flexibility, breathing, breath work, whatever additional classes you want to add in. Yoga makes you feel good both mentally, spiritually, and a lot of times physically. So I think that's probably the biggest ticket item where we can look at a benefit from it is it's going to make you feel good and it's going to make you uh, maybe have a little mental cleanse or think you're doing the right thing. Right. So I think, right. and there's some legitimacy to that, both from an actual spiritual perspective and a, you know, placebo effect, um, give or take. So there's two big benefits from it. Um, some of the detriments is it's going to be an additional thing to your workload, right? We have to factor that in still as stress. It's not like, Ooh, I get a freebie workout because it's only yoga. Like you said, Yoga requires some skill. Like the first few times you do yoga is pretty damn hard. So you might get sore from it. It's a new stimulus. Um, so again, there, there could be an aspect of adaptation to yoga and it adds to your workload. So it's not like you just get a freebie. Um, there's not a whole lot of proposed like strength. I know people talk about getting stronger through doing yoga and being better, able, better control your body weight and poses and this and that. And like, Yes, you're going to get specifically better at the skill of those poses and you're going to be able to hold some isometric strength longer, but you're not just straight up going to be strong from doing yoga. Right. Yeah, you're there's just, a difference. Right. You're not strong. You're going to get positionally stronger and maybe you'll get better at yoga, period. But um, it's not enough strength work to be strong. Um, so in my opinion, you know, it's, it's really to the person. It's like, is this beneficial for your mindset and for you limiting your work? Like, and say it's Sunday and you go do a yoga session, that's probably going to be better for you than going to do your a 10 mile run or than going to do, you know, 10 uh, live rolls. Right. So it's like, again, depending on the context, I know that's kind of a cop on answer, but I think outlining some, some good proposed benefits and, um, you know, dispelled some common faulty beliefs. What about 100%. you, Austin? Well, it's to me, at least as somebody who's not, uh, what is it? RYT. I think that's the, the registered yeah. yoga therapist or something like that. Right. It's 200 extra hours of education. I'm not that, but I did used to cut weight when I was an athlete with hot yoga all the way through high school from freshman through senior year. That's how I personally cut my weight. Um, it's, it's one of those things that it has benefits to it as long as you don't buy into the bullshit, just mm -hmm. like the next thing we're going to talk about, which is Pilates. Um, it's, it's very good for positional strength. 
So like Alex said, it cannot replace strength and conditioning. The people that say that you should do yoga for your strength and conditioning are A, flat out lying to you, and B, idiots. Um, what it does do, though, is it increases your isometric loading, it allows you to hold position, and it allows you to gain control of range of motions through that ISO by increasing your exposure to different types of movement. I like that personally because that is the type of athlete that I am. I would argue that yoga was built for the athlete like I was, a little bit longer, a little bit more mobile, being able to control different positions where I wasn't necessarily the most stable. I had more of a floppy frame, if you will, versus like Alex is more of the, the stable frame. That benefited me a lot in the performance element of things. Um, the second thing is it's intentional breath work. I don't agree with how they teach the breath. Um, it's, it is not biomechanically efficient. They do the same thing that Pilates does where you suck in and you, you hollow out. And it's when we look at the research, it's a bunch of bullshit. I mean, it, it does the job of calming down the nervous system, but from a performance standpoint, it's not the best way to breathe. But what it does is it forces you to actively think about the breath. It forces you to spend mental energy on your breath and make that a forefront of your movement. And no matter what, that's better than just mindlessly going through in a fight or flight state that is going to cause you to consistently be stressed and thus consistently not recover. So I personally think the best part of yoga is forcing yourself to breathe right or wrong, actively thinking about breathing brings you out of that fight or flight state and causes you to cause some sort of relaxation and thus an increase in recovery. The last thing that I think yoga does really, really well is it forces you to increase your mo, not just positional strength, but mobility. If you challenge yourself in yoga, it's, it's hard, dude. It's, it is hard. But if you really challenge yourself in there, you can elevate your heart rate to a extremely high level because you're trying so hard to maybe get a little bit deeper into hip flexion, maybe get a little bit deeper into your warrior pose to where you really sink in. There's these different like power vinyasa classes, or you can do like hot yoga like I did, where you can push yourself to different limits. And it's not necessarily just there for recovery. It's there for a workout. That being said, getting into the negatives, you have to understand that that is a workout. Yoga in it of itself, you need to know what you're doing when you go into the movement or the class that you're going to take. Some classes are designed to be yoga with weightlifting. That was something that I used to take as well. Like they, it was a hot yoga class where they had weights in there. And while it isn't, like I said, a replacement for strength and conditioning, there is an added stimulus of external load, which is always going to make things harder and thus more metabolically demanding. That's going to dig you a deeper hole than just doing a 45 minute flow class right? The second thing that I really don't like about yoga is unless you are with a good teacher that knows how to modify positions, where I have problems with yoga is when people say yoga is healthcare and that's how you should be handling injuries. When again, the same people that say that yoga is strength and conditioning, the same people that say yoga is healthcare unless done by a healthcare practitioner are point blank lying to you. Because while it might have some benefits, if you put somebody into a forward fold with a disc herniation, you're going to piss shit off and make it worse. And they might just get stuck in that forward fold and not be able to get up. That is not helping them. That is hurting them. And while you are well-intentioned with what you're doing, that in it of itself is not healthcare because you know the what, which is the position. You don't know the why, which is why that person or that athlete are feeling the symptoms that they are. So they are not one in it of them or one in the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like anything else. Like if you have a good instructor and you do it well, it's going to be probably a good experience beneficial. If you have a bad instructor, there's just doing it right and that's yep. when that's my argument about crossfit as well it's I was like just about to say CrossFit. it's like yeah, if you have a shit. if you have a good crossfit gym that like integrates people and truly progresses them and, and trains people then you could probably have a good crossfit gym the problem is we don't differentiate in the the experience levels like i, I made a good analogy the other day like crossfit gym should almost operate like jujitsu gyms like mm -hmm. let's have a beginner class you have to earn your quote-unquote blue belt before you go to the advanced class and then you have to get your purple belt before you think about competing 
even for just CrossFit. Like I think there's a bona fide method for that. But um, yeah, back to yoga. I think we can steal those little bits and pieces that we love from yoga and integrate them fully into our strength and conditioning sessions, which I do frequently. A lot of my intercept mobility, a lot of my warm up, a lot of some of my cool down is straight up yoga poses. Like I can't tell you how many up dogs, down dogs, um, child's pose. That's one of our fucking assessments is the push up to a single arm down dog. Like, yeah, it's, exactly. It's extremely useful <sighs> movements. Uh, like the wrist mobility that you get from some of the yoga positions is so good yeah. for strikers in general that have cranky ass forearms or like actually flowing. Like movement flows came from yeah. yoga. That was the first place, which I guess is another, if I had to, I tried to do it to three because three is a good number, but four, I guess is what I'm going to positives of yoga. The movement flow aspect, it allows you to be more fluid. It allows you to increase movement literacy. It allows you to put movements together yeah. where the blockier fighters or the blockier wrestlers or the, the very stiff athletes, they don't necessarily know how to put two, three, four, five things together, similar to like a chain wrestling. Yeah. They just know explode, explode, explode. They don't know how to layer the things in. And that's yoga does that really well because you have to control those positions for prolonged isometrics. Yeah. And I love that format. I think it's just, it's more fun. It's more uh, natural and fluid than like the, the sets and reps regiments that we do in strength and conditioning. So again, and, and by no means replace that, but additionally, Let's add it in or let's steal what we like and leave what we don't like as with any mm -hmm. system, you know, and that's the, the other point that you made. Anybody for any system that's an end all be all is most likely not accurate or trying to sell you something. Fuck them hoes. <laughs> exactly. So it's like yoga is not um, your health care, your strength and conditioning and your mentality training all wrapped on it can be aspects of those and we can get some of those benefits from it but it doesn't cover all our bases per se um and that again except, i, I want to the building a fighter system that one's really good <laughs> yeah you should exclusively do that one right <laughs> perfect great plug um but no i, I want to accentuate to the point that i think yoga can be a really good mental training tool and mentality mm -hmm. training tool for you know mma which is a population of you know, for lack of a better term, hardos, right? For no, sure. no relaxed, you know, person or type B personality is, it's, is in pursuit of MMA excellence. Like it, it's very hard to calmly go after UFC, go, uh, UFC contract or MMA, uh, career. So I think the, the mentality behind yoga, the conscious breath work, the intentionality, the mindfulness, um, and then you can even get deeper into the, the, the religion aspect or the chakras or, or whatever you get into. I think that can be a really powerful tool for some of our athletes to investigate into and then, you know, build out a more robust mental profile, which is going to help them survive throughout their career. Because as much as we, we harp on the physical, um, the mentality piece is really hugely important like i don't think that's a secret in mma um so the more strong foundation you have to rely on that you know after a loss after a win after a big injury after a setback um the better off you're going to be throughout your career so building up some of those mental skills and and yoga can be one way to do that i guess is all i'm trying to say for sure and then moving from yoga to the other one we want to talk about is pilates which is another, I guess, a good category for these are supplemental performance strategies. Sure. Is is okay, kind of go. how they're thought of. Yeah, way, um, way to really bundle that into a pretty name. I got you. That's what I'm good for. Make <laughs> things flashy. Um, remember when we started making this podcast, I, I was the razzle-dazzle. Yeah. Was, that was the original. Yeah, you named all the <laughs> podcasts really clickbaity names. Yes. Uh, but Pilates in and of itself. So again, this is, I'm coming from a place of I've done Pilates before. I am not a certified <laughs> Pilates instructor. Um, I, I know enough about the system that I feel comfortable talking about it, but I don't know enough to know the, the fine tuned intricacies. What he's trying to say is he's trying he knows enough to be a hater, but he's not qualified to be a well, hater. I, I, exactly. I, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, he's a hater folks. He is a hater. I'm not qualified to completely write it off. We'll put it that way. So Pilates, what I, what I really like about Pilates is the trunk training element. It, it forces you to independently move your limbs in a way that is extremely beneficial. It's, it's almost like when I think about the benefits of Pilates, it's like yoga on steroids. 
like using the reformer and having to do those different pike based movements. It's very anterior core dominant, which is a useful skill for our MMA fighters where we need to develop that, that, that anterior power whip. Um, it is breathing based again. I don't agree with how they teach breathing and that's what I'm going to shit on soon, but I like the fact that they try to pair their movement with their breath, whether I agree with how they teach breath or not, that is way better than not doing any breath work at all. I would say my personal opinion, there's people that would argue with me on the other side too. Um, but, and then the other thing about, I don't know much about like uh, floor Pilates or anything like that. I mostly know about the reformer. What I like about the reformer is I like that. It's always a give and a take a push and a pull. It forces you to be more fluid and it forces you to control your entire body. Even though you haven't implement doing those different things, it forces you to use a pulley system and really truly understand where you are in space at all points in time, or else you really fuck up the movement. Right. Yeah. And that's my biggest benefit or pro for Pilates is I think it it really enhances your awareness of specific movements or specific musculature. Um, I spend a lot of time trying to help athletes, clients be aware of their glutes, their lumbopelvic tilt, their uh, diaphragm and, and this. And I think Pilates really accentuates that. Now, again, you can't make a whole strength and conditioning program or your whole uh, crux of your program based on that. Mm -hmm. But I think it does enhance awareness and mindful movement. Um, because Pilates is very specific. You should feel this, you know, along your, your lateral quad or your IT band, your tensor fascia lata. Like, uh, you should feel this in your glute med. We're doing this specific movement with the former. Like, I think that has a place and a role in its own and sure you can get you know, more tone or you can get benefits from doing that and some anterior core work. But again, it's not performance. It's not the right. whole shebang of what we're looking for as an MMA fighter. Um, so I, again, well, I mean, the thing benefits. is, yeah, the thing is, it's why I don't think yoga is the end all be all. Why I don't think Pilates is the end all be all. Why I don't think like Eldoa is another good one that I have a lot yeah. of respect for. There's the, the lady that practices in the room next to me is an Eldoa She's literally the U.S. instructor for Eldoa. Like she, yeah. she is the person, and I think what she does is fucking amazing. But it isn't going to increase tissue thresholds like strength and conditioning does. It's not going to give yeah. you the same performance benefit as getting under a heavy squat or doing a heavy trap bar deadlift or doing a high velocity movement because it's doing completely separate things. Yeah. At the end of the day, performance is about elevating thresholds that you can use in your sport, and all of these different supplemental performance strategies see what i did there it's a good yeah, there. Yeah. slid uh, right in now that's a thing now um <laughs> they, they're fantastic for building body awareness they're fantastic for what they're good for but they can't be the entire system and they can't take up the majority of your workload that that's when it becomes an issue and that's when we start to see performance declines because you start falling into the trap of this is the only way i can do things and you throw out the stuff that we know works Right. And, and, you know, while we're at it, we can throw strength and conditioning right in there too. 100%. Like, yeah. Like riding an air bike and, and lifting a trap bar is not going to win you fights. Nope. Right. Not at all. It can be a key ingredient and it can be a good thing. But if you're spending, <laughs> I would argue, even if you're up to 40% spending all your effort and time in strength and conditioning, you're fucking up. Right. Like you need a lot more skill, technical, tactical work, and then mix some of these things in, create the best blend for you, create the best workload and, and, and uh, schedule that's going to help you be successful. That's why they're supplemental. They're not the, they're not the main course. Your main course is MMA practice, like period. Yep. Right. And yes, I noticed I said MMA practice, it's not jujitsu practice, it's not mitts, it's MMA because as we evolve in the sport, MMA has its own techniques now. MMA has is, is its own entity. So MMA practice is your meat and potatoes, your main dish. And then we have these supplemental performance strategies. Is that what did yep. I do it now? Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, what you did there. All right. Making it a thing. Add those in as needed, right? And and dose them correctly, which, which is why you have a head coach, why you have a head of performance, why you have a physical therapist. Like you can help the, the dose uh, response relationship between all these things, because, you know, and, and I think we're, we're being very fair in outlining benefits and cons, not just, you know, shitting on them. 
right? Because no. as a, a lot of people's group thing goes is like, this is the, this is the thing that's going to put me over the edge. Well, that's, yeah. And that's where somebody, what always happens is like somebody, it was Conor McGregor with Ido Portal. Somebody finds their way to this different, unique supplemental performance strategy. And mm. they're like, this is, this is the best thing ever. This is the only thing you have to do. And then everybody follows suit and we forget that you cannot drill in a fucking screw with a hammer. Mm-hmm. Like it, in in the same vein, you can't unscrew a screw with a fucking Allen wrench. Like it's, it's just not, it's mm-hmm. not going to happen. You have to use the right tool in the toolbox for the right problem. And yeah. at the end of the day, probably for most people, the number one tool in your toolbox is an electric screwdriver. That's <laughs> the one I use the most. I don't know about you. It's probably a Phillips head electric screwdriver. That yeah. has to be your MMA practice. That has to be the thing that stays in the middle. That is the majority of your toolbox. And then all of these other things can be filtered in. Like if I have to break it down in a way, like I'm going to go too, too deep here, but that's fine. Cause it's in my head. Like MMA practice is your screwdriver. That's all your sports specific practices. That's after that, we probably have strength and conditioning is probably the next most important. If we're talking about active movements, that's going to be your hammer. After that, it's probably some sort of running or some sort of like steady state cardio or recovery, which could be your yoga. That's going to be more of like your Allen wrench or it's going to be more of like your ratchet set. Your tape measure. Your tape. I don't use a tape measure much. That's what my phone's for. <laughs> I take a picture and you can scan. You literally just take a picture. It'll measure it. For we you. need to set up a poll for this podcast and, and ask the question, how handy is Austin? Zero percent. I just had, <laughs> uh, dude, I just had this joke with my, uh, he goes, what's a tape measure? <laughs> yeah, no, I just had this joke with, um, my cousin was in town and they had to, oh, my parents God. have a pool at their house and my, sure. my grandma, she needs like, she does water exercises, but she's getting to the age where she needs a railing. So they were mm-hmm. trying to drill. They're using like a cement, like a cement drill to drill yeah. it in. And I'm like, Hey guys, I use my hands for work. I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> if you need your, if you need your Wi-Fi set up, I got I'm you. Such though. a bitch. Oh my <laughs> God. That's all right. I don't have a whole lot of room to talk. My dad just comes fix everything. My dad's super handy. So bro. Um, yes. Well, my wife is crazy handy. Like, and that sounds like such a bitch thing to say, but like, I, if I Lisa, need something put together, Lisa puts that like Lisa, Lisa is a much more complete human than you. Oh, a thousand percent. <laughs> I'm but really no. good at my one specialty. <laughs> oh God. So Austin is what we tell people not to do. Um, oh yeah, dude. I've thought about that before. Right. Yeah. But I also think, um, your screwdriver, right? You have to know what model screwdriver you have, right? Exactly. And that's that speaks to knowing your athletes and knowing their individual skill sets or their superpowers, right? Like maybe I have this screwdriver and like, yes, that's my primary tool is MMA practice, but my screwdriver has a longer battery life than any other screwdriver in the shelf, right? And mm-hmm. that's that's my superpower. Or maybe my screwdriver can drill through concrete because mm-hmm. he's got power for fucking days. Um, so I think it, it, again, it's hugely important to know the right tools in the right context, but also line it up with the right athletes. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. So, um, again, just know your craft and then execute. Well, um, try not to buy into any singular thing, right? That's, that's the, the crux of all of this is use a tool for what it's used for. Don't use it for everything. Look, if you guys got questions on some fad in training or like, or yoga or Pilates or anything, <coughs> please feel free to message us because one yeah. thing, if you have, if you listen to any of the podcasts, I'm fine being a dick and I'm fine picking out all of these different things that we can do that are going to make you good or make you bad. And I'll tell you the benefits, the pros and the cons. So for the love of God, don't just run into anything full head on. Use this as a resource because we are more than happy to talk to you for free and try to figure it out for you in in a night to tell you, hey, do you want to go to yoga? All right, here's why you should. What are you feeling? Why do you want to go to yoga? Which I feel is a question that isn't asked a lot. You just do things without thinking why. You should think why more. Well, I mean, that's the way our society is set up, right? All that targeted advertising. So it's like yoga is the thing missing for you living a wholesome life. Yoga is the thing missing for you to win that next fight, you know, as, as, yeah. as our persuasive advertising goes. Um, so it's easy to get really motivated and inspired by that. And, you know, I'm, I fall victim to it all the time. Right. So that's another thing. We're aware of all these fitness trads because we try, uh, excuse me, fads because we see them all the time and we're yep. uh, generally so. So we can help you navigate those waters if you're having any doubt or you're thinking about spending money on them. Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. Hit, us up. hit that's that line, I think is what the free. kids say. Feel free. Don't try that. That's fine. I think I think I did it right. Anyways, so if you guys get in touch with us, all of our information is in the show notes, both Instagram and email. If you're looking at programs, want to talk about navigating the waters, we have programs available for you, both custom for team, custom for individual, as well as pre-made programs to help you start your journey off. So and all what those I, are what's up? what I think is cool about the programs too is is most of all the program sales we get. People message us first and say, hey, what program do you think would be best? Yeah. Which is really cool, right? Yeah. We're not just blindly buying the the bodybuilding program that we have or whatever. So I think that's a pretty cool aspect to our approach in programming. Right. Well, it, it allows us to fine tune and get you, like, if you send us a message on which program, we can point you in the right direction versus just buying a random program. You might not like the results you're going to get because the programs are designed to do different things. Right. So all of those are at buildingafighter.com. Again, that is buildingafighter.com. This is Dr. Austin Shane. Alex Friedman. And we are out.